Okay. Get up. Come on. Rise and shine. Okay. Get up. Come on. Rise and shine. Okay. Get up. Come on. Rise and shine. How did it begin? How did it begin? I don't know. How did it begin? What do you want to know? How it began. You had... You had... I had a book. You had two books. You must be precise. I must be precise. I had two books. I met a woman. You plotted treason with a woman. You must be precise. Why don't you just shoot me and get it over with? In time. <laughs> First, tell us how it began. You already know. Yes, tell us. You have my diary. Yes, tell us. I can't remember. Tell us what you do remember. Be precise. Tell us about the first time you saw the woman. I don't know when. The first time you remember seeing her then. I didn't know her name, but... You liked her. I wanted to kill her. Why? Tell us about the first time you remember seeing the woman. Be precise. I was in the common room at the Ministry of Truth. You pushed all the chairs aside so that we could all face the telescreen for the two-minute hate. I don't know why she was there to, to spy on me, I thought. Then the face flashed on the screen. What face? You know what face. Goldstein! Oh. Traitor! Death to the pig! Emmanuel Goldstein, enemy of the people. Death to Goldstein! How did you feel? I don't know. How did you feel? I don't know. Sick. Seeing that face, hearing that strained voice say the same old things. And such as? The revolution has been betrayed! Oh. The people must share in the wealth of the state! Oh. Food, housing, and peace. Yes. Yeah. Made me sick. Death to the swine, Goldstein! Kill him! Liar! Go to hell! She shouted louder than anyone. Go to hell! I thought she was going to tear the telescreen off the wall. Did you scream? Yes. Why? Because I was filled with hate. For Goldstein? For her. I wanted to beat her to death. Rape her. Kill her. Slice her throat as she was coming. Why? Because she was a plus good little party member. Because she made me feel... Because she was so... What happened then? Goldstein's face was replaced with an East Asian soldier. A machine gun, some tanks, bombs, burned children. And then it all disappeared and was replaced by... Big Brother! Big Brother! Big brother. Citizens of Oceania, do not fear. That's how he starts every night. Quiet. Together we will crush the terrorist Goldstein and his traitorous followers who would undermine our homeland. Soon, Soon our enemies, enemies will be destroyed, and Oceania's long road to victory will be over! Oh. <laughs> Did you cheer? Of course. And then? And then? And then Big Brother was replaced by the words. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. It's the first time I remember seeing her. Did you think you'd see her again? Did you think you'd see her again? Tell us about the book. Which book? Right, right. Let's start with the diary. I found it. I found it in an old junk shop, just a, an empty old book. You bought a diary. I bought a diary. When the clock struck 13, I shut off my speak right, lock my cubicle, and leave the Ministry of Truth by 1305. I walk home, avoiding Victory Square and the crowds getting ready for hate week. I walk up the stairs and enter my flat, keeping my back to the telescreen. Why did you do that? You already know. Yes, but we must hear it from you. It's in my diary. You read it. You have to say it. We must hear it from you, otherwise your confession is meaningless. I thought it would be safer. You can't always tell when they're watching you, and I, I, I didn't know if I had the right face on. Continue. I go to the kitchen. I pour myself a glass of Victory Gin and I drink it. I go to the desk. Do I take my glass with me? No, I put it down. You must be precise. You must be precise. I put it down in the sink, then I go to the desk. And the desk is where? 
In the corner, there's a small indentation. Why is your desk there? The telescreen can't see me there. Continue. I go to the desk. I open the drawer. I take out the diary. And a pen. Yes, and a pen. You must be precise. You must be precise. I take out a pen, and I begin to write. Last night at the movies, all war films. A very good one of a ship full of refugees being bombed somewhere in the Mediterranean. Audience amused by shots of fat man trying to swim away with a helicopter after him. Saw him through the helicopter's gun sights, and then he was full of holes. The sea turned pink, and he sank like the holes had let the water in. Audience shouting with laughter. Then a lifeboat full of children. A middle-aged woman sitting up in the bow with a little boy about three years old in her arms, screaming with fright and hiding his head between her breasts as if he was trying to burrow right into her. And the woman putting her arms around him, comforting him as if her arms could keep the bullets off him. They'll shoot me too, I don't care. Wait. They'll shoot me too, I don't care. No, They'll I'm shoot me in the back of the neck, I don't care. They always shoot you in the back of the neck and I don't care. What are you thinking? What am I thinking? Thought police already. Already? I sit as still as a mouse hoping they'll go away. They always come at night. My hand on the doorknob, I realize I've left the diary open. <clears throat> I didn't want to smudge the paper. Oh, citizen, I, I thought I heard you come in. Do you think you could come have a look at our kitchen sink? It was Mrs. Parsons. Citizen Parsons. Yes, of course. Citizen Parsons from down the hall. It's blocked up and Tom isn't home. Did you know her well? Her husband, Mr. Citizen Parsons, was a devoted party member and a friend of mine. A faddish man of paralyzing stupidity. At 35, he had just been forced out of the youth league. Well? And his wife looks much older than she is, and you get the impression that there is dust in the creases of her face. <laughs> These were close friends? Not really. If Tom were here, he'd take care of that sink right quick. But you know Tom. <laughs> out raising money for hate week. Uh, oh. Sorry, I forgot to get back to work at the ministry. Oh. Up with your hands! Say that! What? An East Asian spy! I'll shoot you! Uh, I do it myself, but the children are such a handful. I'll vaporize you! Uh, no, send them to the salt mines! <laughs> she must lead a life of terror. Why? Seems like every week some child hero denounces its parents to the thought police. It's all some sort of glorious game to them. A game? Uncovering agents of Goldstein, enemies of Big Brother. Citizens, do you see? Only a degenerate mind would despise heroic children for doing their duty to the homeland. <clears throat> They're disappointed they couldn't see the hanging, if that's what it is. Why can't we go and see the hanging? I'm too busy to take them, and Tom won't be home from work in time. Wanna see the hanging? Wanna see the hanging? I'm sure there'll be plenty of criminals at the next hanging. Wanna go now! There, there! Come on, let Citizen Smith get back to his work. Thank you so much, and uh, if you see Tom, please tell him to find some bread on the way home. Ah! Goldstein. The telescreen had an important announcement. Attention! Your attention, please. A news flash from the Malabar Front. Our heroic forces in South India have smashed the East Asian forces and won a glorious victory. The diary says bad news coming. <coughs> and in celebration of our sweeping triumph, Big Brother has ordered that this week's chocolate ration will be increased from five to seven ounces. <laughs> it had been ten ounces. No. Chocolate rations were raised that week, five to seven ounces. No, it had been ten it ounces. It has always been five. Then it was raised to seven after the Battle of Malabar. Yes, of course. But you don't remember it that way, do you, 6079 Smith? Oh, yes I do. No, you don't. Yeah. Reality cannot be a thought crime. Freedom is the freedom to say that two and two make four. If that is granted, then all else follows. Down with Big Brother! Wait, I... Down with Big Brother! No. 
Down with Big Brother! Down with Big Brother! Down with Big Brother! Don't you want to say no again? No. We'll take that as a yes. You filled half the page. I, was, I just want it. It's all right. It's better to have the crime out in the open than have it fester in your mind, isn't it? Yes, thank you. Say it. Say it. Down with Big Brother. Is that when you begin oh. planning your crimes, your treason? No. no! The spying, the sabotage? No! The assassinations? No! Yes! Yes! I... Uh, uh, I... I... I had... What? I had a dream that night. A dream? A dream? I'm... I'm 10 or 11 years old. I'm with my parents. My mother's... She's tall. Like a building. Holding my little hand. And my father, he's there complaining about the thin soles of his shoes. And then suddenly my father's gone. And my mother is sitting someplace deep down below me with my little sister in her arms. They're looking up at me from down in some, from the bottom of a, a well or some deep grave. Only they're sinking further and further, moving downwards. They're, they're in the belly of a glass ship, looking up at me through the water, moving further and further out of my sight. I, I am out here in the light and the air, and they are being sucked down to death. And they are down there, because I am up here. Were they? The next thing I know, it's a summer evening. And I forget about my mother, and my sister, father. I'm standing in a pasture with a footpath wandering across it, somewhere out of sight, a slow-moving stream under willow trees. It is a place with no darkness. It is a golden country. Were you alone? A girl with dark hair moves across the field towards me. She unbuttons her collar and with one swift movement tears off her clothes and flings them aside. You are aroused? I'm overwhelmed. It's as though with that one gesture she annihilates an entire civilization. As though Big Brother and the government and the Thought Police are all swept into nothingness with one single splendid movement of her arm. When was the next time you saw the woman? I was in the Pearl District. Why? Why? Because that night the sky was a warmer blue than I had seen in a year. I was tired of just working, eating, sleeping. On impulse, I turned right at the bus stop instead of left. I needed to, to be alone, to be able to think. I wandered through brown-colored slums, puddles of filthy water, streets of little two-story houses with doors like rat holes. Sounds terrible. You've never been to the Pearl District? Why would she? To see what the people really live like. They're not people, they're proles. Yes, of course. But anything is better than this stare of the telescreen. Aren't so many in the Pearl sections? Why not? Animals. Who cares what they do? No one. It makes no difference. But you don't believe that, do you, 6079 Smith? Tell us about the girl. When did you see her? I was walking along a side street, and I heard something. Footsteps. Quick footsteps behind me. When I stop, they stop. And then I see, in the reflection of a window on the other side of the street, it was her. She was following me. She is following me. There's a dark little doorway. I ducked inside. Is there anything special I can do for you? Or did you just want to look around? An antique shop. An old man. What was his name? What was his name? 
You already know it's in the book. What was his name? Charrington. No, thank you. I'm just uh, looking at these, um, uh, these. Uh, between you and me, the antique trade's just about finished. Glass, furniture, china, it's all been broken up. I haven't seen a brass candlestick in years. Actually, the shop wasn't comfortably full. Dusty old picture frames, pen knives with broken blades, watches that didn't even pretend to work. Hmm. And then, <coughs> on a small table in the corner, something strangely soft colored, as if made of rainwater. A heavy lump of glass, curved on one side, flat on the other. What is it? At its heart, magnified by its curved surface, was something strange. Pink, convoluted. That's coral, that is. It recalled a rose. Or a sea anemone. It must have come from the Indian Ocean. It wasn't made less than a hundred years ago. More, by the look of it. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And if you want to buy it... Yes. Four dollars. <laughs> I remember what a thing like that would have fetched twenty, but... Who cares about genuine antiques nowadays? Even the few that's left. Why did you waste your money on that? Because it was beautiful. Like a piece of the world, the, the real world. Held safe from Big Brother until... It was beautiful. There's another room upstairs, if you are interested. Uh, not much in it, just a few pieces. I lived here until my wife died. I'm selling the furniture off, little by little. And now here's a lovely mahogany bed, or... Would be if you could get the bugs out of it. <laughs> There's no telescreen. There was no telescreen. Well, they never got around to it, I suppose. Now, there's a nice table in the corner here. There was a picture frame on the wall, a steel engraving. Uh, the frame's been screwed to the wall. I could remove it if you are interested. Hey, I know this place. Yeah, that, that's a ruin across from the Ministry of Peace. That's right. It was bombed in. Oh, many years ago. It used to be a church. How old is it? Hard to tell. Everything's been changed. Everything's been changed. What's that supposed to mean? Buildings, street names. You'd think nothing happened before Big Brother. Nothing important. <laughs> Perhaps I'll come back and look at that engraving. <laughs> I'm not always open, but I am always <laughs> here. <laughs> She was waiting across the street for me. She looks you right in the face, then turns like she hasn't seen you. She was spying on me. She is spying on me. I didn't know if she was thought police or just some amateur looking to impress someone. It's an effort to walk. She follows you, turning once, twice, not running, just moving through the streets. No one is around. It's empty. I wished for the earlier crime. But it's too late. It's too cold. I took the corner. And another. A blind alley. I need a weapon. Dead end. In my pocket. No way out. I had to do it. I must have lost her. I must have lost her. <laughs> Attention, citizens. Here are the latest production numbers from the Ministry of Plenty. Shoe production up 20%. <laughs> Children's coats up 57%. Beef and milk production at all-time highs. <laughs> Overall, Oceania's standard of living is up 42% over last year. <laughs> when did you see her again? She was thought police. I, I had to kill her before she turned me in. Do you plan her murder? I didn't know what else to do. When did you see her again? It, it was it was later, days later. You must be precise. I, I can't remember exactly when. You must be precise. I can't remember. It was four days since I had run into her outside the junk shop. What happened? I was in the Ministry of Truth. What were you doing? Working. Rectifying news articles. Rectifying? Making past articles correspond with later events. Uh, uh, fixing the past. Fixing the... Is everything a lie for you, Smith? It's my job. It's, it's the truth. It is, isn't that what I'm supposed to confess here, the truth? Of course. But you're insane. You don't know the truth. <laughs> I do what Big Brother tells me to do. 
I, I rewrite news articles, I re-edit <clears throat> film and books, I make history and heroes. Wouldn't work. <laughs> he who controls the present controls the past. The past, it's, it's just paper. You cut it this way, Julius Caesar's a hero. Cut it that way, a villain. Wouldn't work! Cut it again and he never existed. You're insane. And if Big Brother wants to make you a hero... He is insane and it's our job to make him well. Why would you do that, Seth? He's insane. He who controls the present controls the past. And he who controls the past controls the future. The ah! only corrections made ah! are to defeat his propaganda. Ah! Yes! That you created. Yes! That you... Ah! That, that I had created, yes! What happened when you saw the woman again? <coughs> I left my cubicle. Where were you going? Where were you going? Uh, the bathroom. I'm standing in the passageway. The figure comes towards me. It's the woman with dark hair. Her right arm is in a sling. She is about four yards from me. You're hurt? And, uh, I'm fine, just hurt for a second. You, you haven't broken anything? No, I'm fine, just hurt for a moment, that's all. Just gave my wrist a bit of a bang. <laughs> Thanks, citizen. You went to your cubicle. I went to the bathroom. You <laughs> must be precise. <laughs> You went to your cubicle. I went to my cubicle. I rectified two news articles about war damage, and the third a prediction Big Brother had made, but... Yes? Not to let one's feelings appear in one's face is a habit that's become an instinct. Yes? We were standing directly in front of the telescreen when it happened. She slipped a piece of paper into my hand as I helped her up. There were two possibilities. One, much more likely, is that she was an agent of the Thought Police and this was an order, a summons to commit suicide. But there was another wilder possibility, that the message wasn't from the Thought Police, but from some kind of underground organization. The Brotherhood. I slipped the note inside a stack of papers I'd been assigned. I hope the telescreens hadn't noticed. Times, August 19. Change Big Brother Prediction East Asian Offensive. Rectify. Change African Front to Indian Front. Slowly I worked my way to her note. Times December 4. Big Brother Misquote Gasoline Oil Production 20% Increase. Rectify. Change to warning of decrease due to East Asian and Goldstein terrorists. What did it say? It said, I love you. I love you. Mm. What did I think? I had a dream that night. Another dream? This is not relevant. Don't decide what's relevant. Thought crime in dreams is more dangerous than one waking. Awake, a disciplined criminal can control himself, but asleep, even the most zealous relax. Only when the subconscious submits will thought crime truly be defeated. Of course. Thank you. Continue with your dream, 6079 Smith. There was an air raid. I'm standing in a, a noisy, crowded place, a, a, a crowded subway station. An old man and woman sit on the floor side by side. The old man's skin breathes sadness, and the tears welling up in his eyes are pure joy. He says, we did not to have trusted him. I said so, didn't I, Ma? We didn't ought to have trusted the bastards. And then, from the dark of the subway comes a light like a train coming. Only I'm the only one who can see it. The light pours out of the tunnel like thick golden water. It's, it's washing up the walls. It's, it's splashing through the air. How can no one else see this? It rains down on us soft, and when it touches me, when it touches me, my heart bursts. The next time you saw her? It, it was later, 
a while. You must be precise. You must be precise. I, I don't know. It, weeks, months, it, it, it felt like years before I saw you it. You must be precise. You must be precise. I, it was the Thursday before hate week. I left the Ministry of Truth at 17 o'clock and went to the cafeteria for dinner. Ah, Smith, just the man I was looking for. It was my friend Simon. Was he a friend like Parsons was a friend? I wanted to ask you whether you'd gotten any extra razor blades. Well, there you are, Smith. Hello, Parsons. Something <laughs> in the tone of his voice seemed to add, you idiot. Uh, you forgot to give me that contribution. Which, Which one? one? You know, the house to house fund for hate week. Two pounds you promised me. Uh, Smith, the blades. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, I looked all over. They don't exist anymore. Was that true? I had two unused ones. Won't be my fault if old Victory Mansion doesn't have the biggest set of flags in the whole street. I've been using the same blade for six weeks. Say, I hear that little boy of mine let fly at you with his slingshot the other day. Yes, he was a bit upset he couldn't go to the execution. <laughs> Missed a good one. Goldstein. That's what he called you. Goldstein. I think it spoils it when they tie their feet together. Well, it shows the right spirit, though, doesn't it? I like to see them kick her. Hey, you know what that little girl of mine did? <laughs> Don't you, Smith? She got two other girls to go with her, slipped off from a hike, and spent the whole afternoon following a strange man. Oh, stayed on his trail, clear through the woods. When they got to the edge of town, handed him over to the patrols. Said he was some kind of spy. Why? Well, she'd never seen anyone wearing shoes like that before, so chances are it was a foreigner. They're pretty clever for seven. Well, I wonder what happened to him. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if... <laughs> Good! Uh, yes, uh, we can't be too careful. So, uh, how's the dictionary coming along? Uh, Parsons? I'm glad you asked. The 11th edition is the definitive one. We're finally getting the language into shape. What do you think the hardest part is, Smith? I have no idea. Guess. Parsons? Uh, don't look at me. If I had brains enough to make up words, I wouldn't know what to do with them. <laughs> what to do with which? Which? Words or brains? What? Wouldn't know what to do with which. Which what? Never mind. <laughs> you see? You see, that's exactly what we're dealing with here. Imprecision of language. So new words will clear everything up. That's what everybody thinks. I expected more from you, Winston. Making words is easy. Destroying words, that's the challenge. Getting rid of redundancy, vagueness. Fewer words, greater precision. And so we get rid of confused thoughts, confused actions, confused people. I'm confused. For instance, if you have a word like good, why have a word like bad? Ungood will do just as well. Uh, better. Uh, much better. Why? No idea. Because it's an exact opposite. Exactly. And if you want a stronger version of good, why have a whole string of vague, useless words like excellent and splendid and all the rest of them, plus good? covers the meaning. <laughs> Double plus good. Uh, yes, Parsons. And not only will we make language precise, we will make citizens precise. Oh, extra double plus good. Don't push it. <laughs> the whole aim of Newspeak is to narrow the range of thought. In the end, we'll make thought crime impossible because there will be no words left to express it. Every year, fewer and fewer words. And the range of consciousness always a little smaller. Has it ever occurred to you, Winston, that in the future not a single human being will be able to understand the conversation we are now having? <laughs> that occurred to me. That's why I didn't ask you. <laughs> Attention, citizens! Glorious news! We have won the battle for production. Recent reports indicate that the standard of living in Oceania has risen by no less than 20% over the past year. Did you still want to kill her? No. This morning, workers marched out of factories and offices and paraded through the streets. I say, Smith, uh, are you feeling okay? I, I'm fine. Fine. I, I'm just looking to get some more gin. Oh, nothing beats a free drink, right, Sam? Say, do you have any razor blades you can let me have? They're voicing their gratitude to Big Brother for the new and happy life which his wise leadership has bestowed upon them. Aww. What time do you leave work? Uh, 1830. Where, where can we meet? Victory Square near the monument. 
uh, telescreens? Well, there'll be a crowd. Just keep somewhere near me. Uh, what time? 19. All right. Did you still think she was with the Thought Police? It made no difference. No. I went to Victory Square after work. You sure you went straight there? I'm sure you didn't have a dream first? Because we could take a break, get some donuts. <laughs> <laughs> it was crowded. There were trucks. Army trucks filled with East Asian prisoners on their way to be shot. It was almost hate week. Bastards! Oh, kill them now! But we'll kill every one of you! Death to the enemies of Big Brother! Hate them now! Here! Every man, woman, and child! That's when I saw her. Shouting the loudest. Go back to hell, you murderous pigs! There are telescreens all over the square. She was facing the street. A long line of trucks passed. Little yellow men in shabby <laughs> uniforms. I'll move up beside her. Her shoulder, her arm are pressed against you. They look down at us over the sides of the truck. Her cheek's so close you can feel its warmth. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you get Sunday afternoon off? Yes. And listen carefully, you're going to have to remember this. Go to the train station. With military precision, she outlined my route. A 30-minute train ride turned left outside the station. Two miles along the road, a gate with a top bar missing. A path across a field, a grass-grown lane, a track between bushes, a dead tree with moss on it. Moss on it? What's that? Fifteen. You may have to wait. I'll get there by another way. Are you sure you remember everything? Yes. Good. Then get away from me as quickly as you can. Oh, get away from me! Menard! You haven't been out to the country? You haven't been out to the country since... Since they put up all the microphones. There were no telescreens, but there was still a chance you could have your voice recognized. Hmm. The train was packed with proles on their way out to the country for a little fresh air and maybe some black market butter. They're so much freer than we are. What? They, they live with their families. They sing, dance. Ignorance is bliss. I thought ignorance was strength. Stop twisting my words, Goldstein. Hey, come on. No, wait. Are you saying we're slaves, traitor? We're here to help you confess. To help you find sanity, and you say, you didn't say the anything. proles are freer than us. Only the proles and the animals are free. I get off the train. Making sure no one is following you. I come to a little pathway, a cattle track between bushes. The flowers. The flowers were so thick it was hard not to step on them. I picked some. I've had this vague idea that I should have a bunch of flowers for her. You heard a sound. I go on picking flowers. She shook her head. Warning you to keep silent, she leads you down the narrow path, deeper into the woods. I follow. With my bunch of flowers feeling relief and inferiority. Why? She was so young and strong. I felt so old and sooty, like some pale creature burrowing underneath boulders that one day breaks through to a warm surface. She leads you to a natural clearing surrounded by saplings tall and too thin to hide microphones. This is the first time she had seen me in the light. And I realize I dropped my flowers. <laughs> I'm 39 years old. I have varicose veins and five false teeth. <laughs> I don't give a damn about your veins. There's no hurry. We've got the whole afternoon. What's your name? Julia. I know yours. Yours is Winston. Winston Smith. How'd you find out? What did you think of me before that day I gave you the note? I... Go on. I hated the sight of you. I wanted to rape you and then kill you. That night in the Pearl District, I thought seriously about smashing your face in with a piece of coral. <laughs> coral? Well, that's imaginative, not particularly deadly, though. Uh, well, well, it's embedded in a chunk of glass. Oh. Oh, oh it's a heavy, heavy <laughs> chunk. <laughs> I thought you were thought police. No shit. I love that she swore. What the fuck made you think I was one of those bastards? And she swore a lot. <laughs> you just kept following me around. I don't know. I, I, I just figured that... That I was a good party member? Pure in word and deed. Parades, banners, slogans, all that shit. 
Yeah, something like that. <coughs> well, actually, I am. To look at! <laughs> Cheerful, obedient, always shout with the crowd! That's what I say. Only way to be safe. Am I safe? No. But from the moment I saw you, I knew you were against those cocksuckers. I think she was talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a river near here? How did you know? You'll be fishing it. Great big ones lying in the pools, <laughs> waving their tails. It's the golden country. Almost. The golden country? It's a, it's a place I see sometimes in a dream. <laughs> it's a place where there is no darkness. <laughs> oh, look! The bluebird landed on a branch not five yards away from us. Almost at the level of our faces. It, it hadn't seen us. It spread its wings, ducked its head for a moment, and began to pour forth a torrent of song. The sound was startling. Have you done this before? <laughs> Hundreds of times. Members of the inner party. <laughs> they would if they got half a chance. They act all holy, all pure, but they're just pigs at the trough. I hate purity. I hate goodness. You're not going to go all nuts on me, are you? <laughs> no, it's just that I don't want any virtue to exist anywhere. Good. Because I'm corrupt to the bones. <laughs> I want you filthy. The more men you've had, the more I love you. Oh, then you better have a whole lot of love. That was all I wanted to hear. Her waist in the bend of my arm was soft and warm. Our bodies melted together. Everywhere my hands went, she was as yielding as water. Our mouths clung together. And almost as quickly as I had dreamt, she tore off her clothes, annihilating an entire culture. <laughs> her body gleamed in the sun. She's felt. She was feeling, instinct, undifferentiated desire. If that means she's a slut, then I agree. What was your name? 9752 Larson J. 26 years old, I live in a hostel with 30 other girls. What was your name? Julia. I work on the novel writing machines in the fiction department. I enjoy my work. Enjoy using my hands. I feel at home with machinery, but do not consider myself clever. <laughs> she worked in the porno section of fiction. Cheap porn for the proles. That's why I don't read. And why she didn't like being around other women. Oh, no, I'm around them all goddamn day. Only girls in the porno sect. Why? Because we're so pure. Oh. <laughs> we talked about getting married. No. All that does is let them know you're trying to fuck on a regular basis. <laughs> See, this was her central theme. For her, sex created a world outside the government's control. It's like you're using up energy and afterwards you're happy. You don't give a damn about anything. <laughs> they hate that. They want you to be bursting with energy all the time. All this marching up and down and cheering and waving flags. Just sex gone sour. I mean, how can anyone get excited about <coughs> Big Brother, the three-year plan, the two minutes hate after a good fuck? <laughs> that all the two of you talked about? When we ourselves weren't fucking, yes. <laughs> Shut him up! Why aren't you stopping him? Get up! You're being a part of his illness, his thought crime. We are doing what we're told. They're doing what they're told. So then we should be told to do something different. This, this deviant behavior. This. <clears throat> we never went back to that clearing in the woods. Too dangerous. There were other clearings. Dry river beds. An abandoned church once. But not often enough. How long did this continue? Not long. I wanted to find some place where we could be alone together without 
feeling like we had to make love. Good. We rented the room above the antique shop. Weren't you worried the shop owner might turn you in? Why would he? Because he's a law-abiding citizen. Yes, of course. There you are. Uh, look what I brought. Sugar? Real sugar. Not saccharin. Sugar. And, uh, oh, oh, a loaf of bread. Oh. Real white bread, not sawdust. Oh. And, oh, a jar of jam and a bottle of milk. <laughs> How? In her party. There's nothing those shitbags don't have. Shitbags? Really? That's not even a word. <laughs> <laughs> shitbags? Turn around and don't turn back for three minutes. Go on the other side of the room, and don't turn around until I tell you. It was only a hopeless fancy. It passed like an April day. But a look and a word and the dreams they stirred have stolen my heart away. They say that time heals all things. They say you can always forget. But the smiles and the tears across the years, they twist my heartstrings here. I had never heard a member of the party singing. Hadn't you heard them at meetings? I meant alone and spontaneously. Hmm. Uh, turn around. I thought she was going to be naked. Probably full of bed bugs. Who cares? This is the first real bed I've been in since I was a child. Who cares? <laughs> oh, oh, get the fuck out of here! All I said no, was... No, it was... A rat! Stuck his nose out behind the stove. There's a hole down there. Rats in this room? They're all over. We've even got them in the kitchen at the hostel, swarming with them. Did you know they attack children? The big brown ones are the worst. They always... Stop her! <laughs> this one's based on this one time after I lost my mother and my sister. I was I was picking through a recent ruin. I I think the car bomb had hit maybe about a month before. I was looking for food, clothes, slew that. I fell. There was a, a basement, I suppose, and the ground cracked and swallowed me. I was in darkness, <coughs> coughing up dust and soot, and I wasn't hurt. Something soft had broken my fall. Now, now I had seen plenty of dead bodies. No problem. From the look of her, she'd been gone. Uh, a week, maybe a week and a half. Her legs were crushed under a concrete slab. She probably survived the blast and no one could hear her cries or didn't care. So I pulled myself up to 
look for a way out, and and I felt movement beneath me. She moved. I couldn't even take care of myself. I, what was I supposed to do for her? I, it would have been better just to leave her to die, but, but the next thing I know, I'm, I'm, I'm on my knees, and I'm, I'm putting my arms underneath her, and, and I'm saying, it's, it's okay, ma'am. It's okay. I'll, I'll get you some help. I'll find us a way out of here. And, and she moved again. A rattling breath. So I tried. I, 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 I tried. I tried to lift her. Just, just spine. And ribs cold and hard in my hands. And something warm brushed up against my fingers. So I pulled back her ragged coat and And the rats had made a very fine home of her, <laughs> slipping into holes that they'd gnawed out. She was, she was just leather and bone that the fat rats ate at their leisure, and they were just waiting. They were just waiting for a new meal to come falling through the ceiling. All those little yellow eyes. I still dream about it. Don't worry, I'll, I'll stuff it up before we go. Next time I'll bring some plaster and plug it up. What's this? It was us in that room. Well, that's Coral. It's a, it's a little chunk of history. A message from a hundred years ago. And that picture over there, is that a hundred years old? Can't tell. Wait. Is this the thing you were going to kill me with? <laughs> oh! oh! How often did you go back to the flat? First, you're careful. Once, twice a month. Yes. It started to feel too normal. <coughs> like that was the real world and this was just some reoccurring nightmare. Why don't I stop? I have to know I'll get caught eventually. Why do I keep doing this? Yes. We should have just walked out of that room and never seen each other again. It was too late. So, so, so what? I just give up my, your self for, for some, for some lust, some animal? I cut myself off from the state, from, from Big Brother, from all of us, and for what? For some idea of some He's kind insane, of... that's why. Shut up! Shitbag. <laughs> what, she can say it, but I can't? Sit it down. <laughs> Tell us about the book. There were two books, must be precise. Tell us about Goldstein's book. What about Where'd it? Where'd you get it? From a friend. Who? Who? Oh. You already know. You have to say it, otherwise your confession is meaningless. Uh, O'Brien. Good. O'Brien. O'Brien, I was reading one of your Newspeak articles in the Times the other day. You take a scholarly interest in Newspeak, I believe. I'd known O'Brien for a few years. Hardly scholarly. It's possible to know anyone nowadays. How many years had you known him? I don't know. You must be precise. I don't know. Years and years. He was an inner party member, very important to the government. But, but I always felt like there was something different about O'Brien. I'm only an amateur. But you write it very elegantly. I always felt like there was some code passing between us. A code I didn't understand. But you wanted to. Have you seen the 10th edition of the Newspeak Dictionary? No, we're still using the 9th in the records department. Well, it's not due to appear for some months. I have an advanced copy. Perhaps it might interest you to look at it. Something was happening here. Some of the new changes are most ingenious. The reduction of the number of verbs. That's the point that will appeal to you, I think. He stopped and adjusted his glasses. Now, let's see, I could send it to you, but I invariably forget anything of that kind. What should we do? This was it. Perhaps you could pick it up with my flat sometime. Let me give you my address. We were standing directly in front of a telescreen. He was giving it to me right in front of a telescreen. I'm usually at home in the evenings. A 
Attention citizens, news from the front. The forces of Oceania have swept to a crushing victory in the Libyan desert. Our brave men and women have smashed the East Asian armies, which are now retreating throughout Africa. <laughs> and not to be outdone by a heroic soldiers overseas, here at home, Big Brother, aided by the junior spies, uncovered a massive conspiracy of saboteurs and agents of Goldstein. With the arrest of these terrorists, the Brotherhood will soon be smashed, and final victory over Goldsteinism will be assured. How can you trust O'Brien? He's one of us! No, there are only two of us, you and me. You want to get us killed? I want to be part of the movement! There is no goddamn movement! It's all up in your head! You, you see a poster, crooked, it's sabotage, a look in the street, a vast conspiracy! This, here, between us, this is the only revolution we're ever going to have, and when we die, it dies. How can you believe that? Because I know these bastards better than you could have. I know how they twist. You can't trust one of them. It's all a show. The war, brotherhood. Goldstein, all a show. There's got to be some truth in this world. You don't even know if the war is really happening. What? The telescreens lie about everything else you said so yourself. For all we know, Big Brother could be dropping bombs on us. Oh, oh, oh the, the invincible Goldstein. Always about to be caught. Always about to be crushed, but never quite overcome. You're wrong. Goldstein exists. That much, that much I'm sure of. Julia, we have to start thinking about what comes after us. You screw that. Enjoy the revolution we have. We might as well be dead. Well, we're not dead, yes! Six months? A year? At this point, life and death are the same thing! Are you saying it makes no difference to you whether you're holding some skeleton or, or, or this? You can't trust anyone except me and your cop. We will never let you down. <laughs> Oh, you. You are just a rebel from the waist down. <laughs> you love the sound of that. Animal. <laughs> Listen, I just have this feeling about O'Brien. Oh, is it the same feeling that told you I was in the Thought Police? Oh, what, you're not? <laughs> Julia. Whatever happens, I will never betray you. I will never stop loving you. Everyone confesses. They can make you say anything they want. No, not, not confession. Betrayal. They can't make me. They can't make me stop loving you. That would be real betrayal. The one thing they can't do they can't get inside you. They can't get inside you. They can't. I will never betray you. I will never stop loving you. And we kissed and talked and made love and talked and made love again. She agreed to go with you? Yes. He was insane too. She loved me. Same thing. <laughs> she loves me. What? What did you say? She loved him. That's not what you said. You said she loves me. <laughs> me, him, it's all he, it's he all just part of me. He did. I heard him with my own ears. She he said me. she loves me. So he he didn't me. mean it. Why are you defending? Hey! Oh, hey! Why are you defending me? Oh, You're losing it. Shut up! A couple of lovebirds. This this is thought crime. This has gone too far. We're just doing our job. Oh, job. This is serving your country. What do you want from us? Whose side are you? Stop I him! You. I love you. Stop I love him! You. I love you, Julia! Leave him. Ah! We're ah! finished for now. Ah! Ah! Ah!
My fellow citizens, listen to me. We are under siege. We are surrounded by forces of evil, evil that would tear down all we've built and cover the world with darkness. We've all fought hard, sacrificed. You've all been heroes, but our enemy has grown strong, so strong. I have in my hand messages intercepted outlining their strategies. Satellite photos showing their poison gas factories, their secret nuclear weapons plants, orders from their dictator to his fanatical armies. You all know how they torture, rape any of our brave heroes who fall into their bloodstained hands, but I am sorry to say here, here is also undeniable evidence that even in our homeland, the enemy has found traitors who help him. No! Here! Here is the proof of their plan to attack us in our homes. To Goldstein! Yeah, to the agents of Goldstein! Massacre our children! No. To occupy our homeland! Big brother, protect us! Big brother! Down with Eurasia! Down with Eurasia! Wait, that can't be right. Uh, the most savage shouts of all came from the school children. <laughs> Kill them all! Tear them apart! But Eurasia is our ally. We are at war with East Asia. Quiet. His dream. <laughs> That's right. Come on. Say it. Down with Eurasia. Oceania is at war with Eurasia. Oceania has always been at war with Eurasia. But it is his dream. The square was packed with thousands of people. Teachers, engineers, custodians, cooks, hundreds of school children. And the square was littered with posters of our Eurasian enemies. Their eyes, their faces twisted with hate. And we were a whirlwind of vengeance, ready to scour the earth clean of evil, ready to tear apart the last Eurasian prisoner, tear down the last Eurasian building, stomp to death the last Eurasian child in the last dying Eurasian mother's arms. Down with Eurasia! Down with Eurasia! That's right, down with Eurasia! Down to the last drop of blood, come on! Down with Eurasia! Down with Eurasia! And as we shouted at the top of our patriotic lungs, a messenger ran up to the platform and slipped a piece of paper in the speaker's hands. Uh, somebody, uh, a piece of paper, uh, a pencil. Together, we can, we must defeat that vile nation of criminals and slaves. Together, we will destroy East Asia. What? Down with East Asia! See, nothing had changed in his manner or speech, but suddenly the names were different. Suddenly Oceania was at war with East Asia. Told you. Down with East Asia! Oceania is at war with East Asia. Oceania has always been at war with East Asia. Down, Down with East Asia! Asia! Down with East, East Asia! Asia! And any thought of war with Eurasia was flushed clean out of us, and we were quickly filled with the new, everlasting truth. Down, Down with East Asia! Asia! Down with East Asia! But oh, wait! Something's wrong. What? The poster's in the square. Pictures of our brave Eurasian allies, they're, yeah. they're all wrong, distorted with rage, hideous. They're all wrong. They're hideous. Sabotage. Who? The agents of Goldstein have been at work. Oh. There was one, and, and, and then another. Oh. Take them down. East Asian animals working with Goldstein traitors to undermine our glorious homeland, our families. And the speaker didn't miss a beat. And our way of life. Death to East Asia. Long live Big Brother! Death to East Asia! Asia! Death to East Asia! So what? Big Brother is lying about the war, too? It was only a dream. From his own lips, it was only a dream. Yes. And all your dreams are very disturbed. Yes. From his own lips. When did you go to see O'Brien? About a month after he gave me his address. <coughs> we... Julia and I went to his apartment. And what did you talk about? There's no point in trying to shield anyone. We have your diary. I can't remember. 6079 Smith, you will tell us the whole truth. Well, I can tell you the first thing he did was to turn off the telescreen. <coughs> you can turn it off? Yes, I have that privilege. We're standing in a long and softly lit room. The openness... Spaciousness of everything, smell of good food, good tobacco, everything was intimidating. Even the cream-colored walls. I don't think I'd seen walls that weren't grimy from the contact of human bodies. Well, shall I say it, or will you? Is that thing really off? Oh, yes. Everything is turned off. We are alone. O'Brien, 
We have come here because we believe that there is some kind of conspiracy, a secret organization that is working against the government, and that you are involved in it. No. We want to join it and work for it. I see. And how do I know you are not thought police sent to trap me? Citizen, let's go. I know because I've been keeping a close eye on you. Come on. Watching for signs of loyalty to our leader. Well, right. I know, Citizen. Emmanuel I Goldstein. Goldstein? Yes. You. Our. There's not much time. It's suspicious even for inner party members to leave the telescreen off for too long. Answer me quickly and honestly. What are you prepared to do? Anything that we're capable of. You're prepared to give your lives? Yes. yes. To commit murder? Yes. Yes. To commit acts of sabotage, maybe killing hundreds of innocent people? Yes. Yes. It was so routine. To betray your country to foreign powers? Yes. yes. A sort of catechism? To cheat? Yes. Yes. Forge? Yes. yes. Blackmail? Yes. yes. Do anything to weaken and demoralize the state? Yes. yes. It was so liberating. Promising, swearing to any, everything. To commit suicide, if and when we order you to. Yes. Yes. Like he had a flashlight and was shining it in our minds, showing us every fear and forbidden thing and saying, there, that. Would you do that for freedom? You are prepared, the two of you, to separate and never see one another again. No. Why did she say no? Why did she say no? Stop. What did you say? No. Freedom is so important to you, why did you say no? You'll be fighting in the dark. You'll receive orders and obey them. When you are caught, which is inevitable, you'll have very little to confess and can betray only a handful of people. You won't even betray me, because by that time, I'll most likely be dead. O'Brien <laughs> seemed diabolically invincible. He couldn't be defeated. There was no stratagem he was not equal to, no danger he wouldn't foresee. Really? The Brotherhood operates as independent cells. Nothing holds us together except for an indestructible idea. You will never have anything to sustain you except for that idea. No allies, no encouragement, no hope of survival. There is no possibility that any change will take place within our lifetimes. <coughs> when change comes, we will take part in it as handfuls of dust and splinters of bone. We are the dead. Our only true life is in the future. Time for you to go. Do you carry a briefcase to work with you? Yes. What's it like? Uh, uh, it's black, very shabby. With two straps. With two straps. One morning soon, there will be a misprinted word in your morning's work, and you will have to ask for a repeat. On the following day, you will go to work without your briefcase. In the street, a man will touch you on the arm and say, I think you have dropped your briefcase. The one he hands you will contain a copy of the book. Goldstein's book. Will we meet again? Most likely not. If we do, it shall be in the place. In the place where there is no darkness. Yes. Quite. When did you receive the book? A few days later. The misspelled word was abomination. <laughs> the next day I was at the bus stop. A brief exchange and I had it. Who gave it to you? I don't know. What was his name? What did he look it like? It was so fast. You can't protect I'm him. not trying to. Who gave it to you? Ah! Uh, I... I don't Who know. Who gave it to you? I... I don't... You cannot protect him. I'm not! I go to the flat hours before Julia will arrive. I climb the stair above Mr. Charrington's shop. Sit in the armchair, open the window, and undo the straps of my briefcase. It's heavy, dirty, with no name or title. The pages are worn and fall apart. As if the book had passed through many hands. Take it out. Read it. Title means 
description says. The theory and practice of oligarchical collectivism by Emmanuel Goldstein. Go on. Chapter 1. Ignorance is strength. Throughout recorded time, and probably since the end of the Neolithic age, there have been three kinds of people in the world. The high, the middle, and the low. The aims of these three groups are entirely irreconcilable. I didn't start at the beginning. What? I didn't start at the beginning. I, I flipped through. Why? Because I felt like it. <laughs> Where did you start? <clears throat> Chapter 3, War is Peace. Chapter 3, War is Peace. At the turn of the 20th century, when industrial machines became commonplace, it became apparent that the need for human drudgery, and to a great extent human inequality, had disappeared. If machines were used deliberately and thoughtfully, hunger, overwork, illiteracy, and disease could be eliminated within a few generations. But in a world in which everyone works short hours, has enough to eat, lives in a house with a bathroom and a refrigerator, the great mass of human beings normally stupefied by poverty would learn to think for themselves. And sooner or later they would realize that the privileged elite minority has no function. A hierarchical society is only possible on a basis of poverty and ignorance. The problem, then, is how can the powerful keep the wheels of industry turning without increasing the real wealth of the world in general? Goods must be produced, but they must not be distributed. And in practice, the only way of achieving this is continuous warfare. So war is no longer the desperate, annihilating struggle that it was. It's not that the conduct of war has become less bloodthirsty, but on the contrary, war hysteria is continuous and universal in all countries. And such acts as rape, looting, the slaughter of children, and reprisals against prisoners are looked upon as normal when they are committed by one's own side. But the primary aim of modern warfare is not conquest or annihilation, but economics. The primary aim of modern warfare is to deplete the resources of one's own society. The essential act of war is destruction, not necessarily of human lives, but of the products of human labor. War is a way of shattering to pieces, pouring into the stratosphere, or sinking into the depths of the sea materials which might otherwise be used to make the masses too comfortable and in the long run too intelligent. War has become a purely internal affair, waged by each ruling group against its own subjects, its sole object to keep the structure of society intact. Any war effort is always planned to eat up whatever surplus might exist after meeting the bare needs of the population. I've got the book. Look what I brought! <laughs> Inner party coffee. I had to wrap a bit of plastic around it because, oh, that smell. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it right here. This, this is, this is Goldstein's. The, the book. I heard you. Even the humblest, most industrious citizen is expected to be an ignorant fanatic whose prevailing moods are fear, hatred, adulation, and triumph, regardless of his own suffering. 
In other words, the mentality appropriate to a state of war, and being at war, and therefore in danger, makes the handing over of all power to a small caste seem the natural, unavoidable condition of survival. This is news to you? And, 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 and any thoughts which might lead to a rebellious attitude are killed in advance by acquired self-censorship. It's all there, you see. Not the what, but the why. The what? The why. We're, we're cut off from reality like, like, like spacemen drifting up, not knowing up from down. You're making this up, aren't you? Big Brother tells us to fight for freedom abroad, but at home, freedom is slavery. Do you want some coffee Big or not? Big Brother knows every... Yes, please. Big Brother knows everything, but for the citizens, ignorance is strength. Oh no, please, go on. It's marvelous, really. You should read it. You read it, read it aloud. Double think is the power to hold two contradictory beliefs in one's mind simultaneously and accept both of them. To forget any fact that has become inconvenient, tell deliberate lies, and then draw the truth back from oblivion just so long as it's needed. All of this is necessary to safeguard the infallibility of the party. Julia. Julia. Julia, I. Here it comes. I had a dream that night. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> we were asleep in a field. The, the clearing where we first made love. Only the trees were so tall. The branches and the leaves were like clouds above us. And the trunks were as thin as fingers. And you could see to the horizon all around us. And there was no darkness. It was the golden country. And when you woke up, you woke up. I woke up to the sound of singing. It was only a hopeless fancy. It passed like an April day. A woman singing. But I look in the dreams they stand. They've stolen my heart away. A pro woman singing in the courtyard. She was hanging up laundry, dozens of diapers to dry. I wondered if she took in laundry for a living or if she was just the slave of 20 or 30 grandchildren. I'm hungry. Oh, damn. The stove's going out and the water's cold. There's no oil in it. We'll get some from the shopkeeper. They say that time heals all things. They say you can always forget. But the smiles and tears across the years, they twist my heart strings yet. She's beautiful. She's a yard across the hips. <laughs> That's her style of beauty. How many children do you think she has, five? Oh, 15 more like. <laughs> Look at that sky. It's strange to think that's the same sky for all of us. Eurasia, East Asia, here. Everywhere sings that same woman. Hope it's not that same fucking song. <laughs> One day she will give birth to a race of conscious beings. Oh, with hips like that, she can do it all at once. <laughs> She's the future. We're nothing. You sure know how to sweet talk a girl. It's it's like O'Brien said. Uh. By the time any real change happens, we'll just be handfuls of dust. She'll still be here. Singing that same fucking song. <laughs> we are the dead. You are the dead. It came from behind the picture. It came from behind the picture. I told you to remain exactly where you were. Make no movement until you are ordered. There was a snap, and the picture of the church fell away from the telescreen behind it. Now they can see it. Now we can see you, said the voice. 
Stand out in the middle of the room. Stand back to back. Clasp your hands behind your heads. Do not touch one another. The singing stopped. The house was surrounded. The house is surrounded, said the voice. We, you may as well say goodbye. You may as well say goodbye, said the voice. A policeman enters the room. <laughs> Pause. Wait! For what? Your actions, just like your thought crimes, bring suffering to others. Are you surprised? Do you know for how long? Hours, days. Not that long. Do you know where you are? Do you know where you are? Be precise. The Ministry of Love. Where is Julia? Continue with your story. Where is Julia? Continue with your story. You've seen everything that's happened since I've been here. Have we? Where is Julia? Continue with your story. brought into this cell. It was crowded. Ten or fifteen people. Common criminals, mostly. They screamed at the guards, fought back, ate smuggled food, and shouted down the telescreen. Go on! Go on! You bastards! Yes! You are bastards! There will be no talking in the cell! Did you know any of the prisoners? You know I did. Sign. Ah, Winston. You too. How long have you been here? His face looked like a skull. The drawn mouth, the large eyes. He was dying of starvation. What are you in for? We were producing a definitive Newspeak edition of the poems of Kipling. I allowed the word... God to remain at the end of a line. I could not help it. It was impossible to change the line. The rhyme was broad. Do you realize there are only 12 rhymes to God in the entire language? Claude, Nard, Autrobot, none of them make sense. Has it ever occurred to you that the whole history of our poetry has been determined by the fact that the English language lacks rhymes? Had it ever occurred to you? No. And given the circumstances, I didn't think it was very interesting or important. Quiet! That's what happened next, wasn't it? The telescreen told you? Yes, quite right. The telescreen told us to be quiet, and we were quiet for some time. Days, weeks. Not that long. Smith? It was Parsons. What, what are you in for? Thought crime? You, you, you don't think they'll shoot me? Do you? They, they, they don't shoot you if you haven't actually done anything. Only thoughts, which you can't help. I, I, I know they give you a fair hearing. They'll have my record. Won't they? What kind of citizen I've been? I did my best for a big brother, didn't I? I'll get off with five years, don't you think? Or even ten. I, I'd be pretty useful in a labor... Labor camp? They wouldn't shoot me for going off the rails just once, would they? I can't believe you're guilty. Of course I am. You don't think Big Brother would convict an innocent man, do you? <laughs> of course not. Thought crime's a dreadful thing, Winston. Got a hold of me in my sleep. Well, there I was, working away, doing my part. I didn't know any stuff in my head at all. And then, do you know what they heard me say in my sleep? voice sank like someone who's forced to utter an obscenity for medical reasons. Dealt with Big Brother. Yes, I said that. Over and over again, it seems. I, I'm glad they caught me before it went any further. Do you know what I'm going to say when I go before the tribunal? 
Thank you. I'm going to say thank you for saving me before it was too late. Who denounced you? My little daughter. She was standing by the door with one of those listening things that Big Brother gives all the kids. Heard what I was saying and turned me in the next day. Pretty clever for seven. It shows I brought her up right. That should count for something, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Perhaps. Another man was brought in. <clears throat> Commonplace enough, but when he saw a sign, he looked at him with a sort of guiltiness. With a sly sideways glance, he slid something into Syme's hand. Sign! 2713 Sign J. Let fall that piece of bread. Remain standing where you are. Face the door. Make no movement. Guard! Room 101. Room 101. What else is it you want to know? And then? You already know what happened. You saw it. And you, I've told you everything! Why do you need me to tell this? Just the tell me what it is you want and I'll confess it straight off. Write it down and I'll sign it anything. Just please, officer, citizen, shoot me. Hang me. I've got a wife and three children. The biggest of them isn't six years old. Just take them, take them, cut, take, cut their throats, and I'll stand by and watch. No, no, he's the one you want, not me. You didn't hear what he said when he handed me the bread. He's the one against the homeland, not me. He's, he's the one you want. No, 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 you didn't, you didn't hear him. Something went wrong with the telescreen. No, no, he's the one you want. Take him, not me. Give me a chance. Room 101. one they were all taken away. Parsons almost seemed happy. I don't know how long I've been alone. Weeks? Months? Not that long. And they'll be coming for me soon. Soon. Are they going to kill me? Would you like them to? Oh, they got to me a long time ago. No. Not to save yourself, Winston, you know it. Oh, no. You've always known it. No. And now we shall all talk together face to face, hmm? Where shall it be? Ice. A place where there is no darkness. <laughs> Room 101! Yes. 
Yes. Don't worry, Winston. You're in my keeping. I shall save you. Believe me, don't you? I've answered all your questions. I've been precise. What, what else is there? Oh, Winston, there is always more. That was 40. Numbers on this dial run up to 100. Tell me any lies, and you will cry out in pain instantly. You understand? Yes. I'm taking this trouble with you, Winston, because you're worth the trouble. But you are mentally deranged. And instead of curing yourself, you cling to your disease like a virtue. Hmm? For example, who is Oceania at war with? Oceania is at war with East Asia. But you don't believe that, do you? Hmm? The truth, please. Your truth. Tell us what you think you remember. I remember. Not even a month before I was arrested. The war wasn't with East Asia. The war was with Eurasia. One of your dreams. One of your dreams. Not a dream. It happened. We spent weeks rewriting the newspaper articles. You know it. You must remember I it. I do not remember it. You must. Such a memory does not exist because such an event never happened. Oceania is at war with East Asia. Oceania has always been at war with East Asia. As you said, he who controls the past controls the future. He who controls the present controls the past. And where does the past exist? In records. It is written down. The government controls all records. Where else? In film. Video. Big Brother creates all film, television. In the mind. Human memories. We control all memories. You do not control mine. No, no, you don't control it. Only the disciplined mind can see reality, Winston. You remember writing in your diary that freedom is the freedom to say that two plus two make four? Yes. How many fingers am I holding up, Winston? Four. And if the government says there are five, then come in. How many fingers, Winston? Uh, four. How many fingers, Winston? Four. Four. What else can I say? Four. How many fingers, Winston? Stop it! Stop it! Sometimes they are five, sometimes they are three, sometimes they are all of them at once. You have to try harder. It's not easy to become sane. <laughs> I would see five if I could. I'm trying to see uh, five. Which is it you wish? Do they think you see five or to really see them? Really to see them. Let's see. I don't know. Please, 
you'll, you'll kill me if you do that again. I, I don't know. Four, four, five, six, I don't know. Better. Tell me, why do we bring people to the Ministry of Love? To help them confess. Try again. To punish them. No! To cure them, to make them sane. They don't care about their stupid crimes. He's committed the thought. He's all we care about. The thought? It's the crime. In the old days, the heretic walked through the stake, still a heretic. Proclaiming his heresy, exulting in it, carrying rebellion <coughs> locked up inside his skull. But as long as the heretic resists us, we never kill him. He dies triumphant. We convert. We make him one of ourselves, not in appearance, but genuinely, heart and soul. We make the brain perfect before we blow it out. <laughs> and in that last moment, there is nothing left but love for Big Brother, sorrow for what they've done, and the desire to be shot quickly when their minds are still pure. I enjoy talking to you, Winston. You intrigue me. Before we bring the session to an end, you can ask me a few questions if you like. Anything. What have you done with Julia? I haven't done anything with her. She's not my concern. You are. Where is she? Next question. Where is she? Next question! Does Big Brother exist? Of course he exists. Does he exist in the same way that I exist? You do not exist. Is the book real? Of course it is. I wrote it. Well, and I collaborated in writing it. But, but all the things it said. Oh, the high shall be overthrown by the middle, who enlist the low on their side by pretending to fight for liberty and justice. After the revolution, the low are thrust down into their old position. A new middle group is born, and the struggle begins again. <laughs> the Goldstein, the Brotherhood. That's way to control a rebellion is to start it yourself. You're monsters. We are in the business of tearing human minds to pieces and putting them back together again in shapes of our choosing. Creating a world where there is no loyalty except fanatical loyalty to the state, and no love except the passionate love of Big Brother. Nothing we are not in control of. Do not control the climate or the law of gravity. You cannot change reality. Reality is inside the skull, Winston. I can float off this floor like a soap bubble if I wish, but Big Brother doesn't wish it. And if Big Brother says that four is five or day is night or love is hate, it is. You can't found a civilization of cruelty and hatred and fear. Why not? I don't know. Somehow, somehow we will beat you. Sooner or later, we will tear you to pieces. I don't see any evidence of that, do you? And what is it exactly that will defeat us? The human spirit. The human spirit? And do you consider yourself a human? Yes. And do you consider yourself morally superior to us with all our lies and our cruelty? Yes. You are prepared to cheat? Yes. Forge? Yes. yes. Commit blackmail? Yes. Commit murder? Yes. Commit acts of sabotage? Perhaps killing hundreds of innocent people? Yes. yes. It's all so routine. Yes. There you are, Winston, the guardian of the human spirit. If you are human, Winston, here's a picture of the future. Imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. You did this. You 
reduced me to this. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You reduced yourself to it. This is what you accepted when you set yourself up against our homeland. And now, what are you? A bag of filth. Can you think of a single degradation you have not brought on yourself? I have not betrayed Julia. It's always been at war with East Asia. Nothing exists. My mind. That's not our department. We're here to make him well. So if the thought police can shoot him, well, I say let's get on with it. It's not our trial. What if it is? We're so What if it is our trial? What if what's really going on here is a test to see how we react to his thought crime? To see the big brother how we wouldn't. stomach his treason, his dreams. I've always been a good party member. Bullshit! Brother. You, all of you, doing what we're told. You're told to love big brother and crush the enemy. I dream. We got the I dream, Colstein! You know what I dream? 
I dream that I'm doing my job, that I'm serving my country, and then, you know what? I get up, I serve my country, and I do my job. My life is a dream. Uh, uh, Would you shut up? Shut up! Shut up! Long live Big Brother! Death to Goldstein! Death to the enemies of Big Brother! <laughs> has come for you to love Big Brother. Not obey him. Love him. You must understand that only Big Brother can show you the truth. Only Big Brother can answer all questions and relieve the pain that you felt all your life. Kill me. Not yet. Was, have you ever wondered what was in room 101? And I'm going to tell you. You already know. Everyone knows. The thing that's in room 101 is the worst thing in the world. Well, the worst thing in the world varies from person to person. It could be burial alive, death by fire, drowning, impaled into or 50 other deaths. Sometimes it's quite trivial, not even fatal. In your case, the worst thing in the world happens to be rats. <laughs> you remember from your diary that moment of panic in your dreams? Air in the blackness, a body just bone and leather in your hand. And then you are alone, surrounded by those eyes, those yellow eyes. Coming at you in the dark. Please, please, what, what is it you want? Sometimes pain is not enough. Oh, God. A person can hold out against pain even to the point of death, but for everyone there is something unendurable. <coughs> it will do what's required. Please, how can, how can I do it if You've I heard of the things that happen? Some woman leaves her baby alone in the house for five minutes. And they will strip it to the bone. <laughs> they show an astonishing intelligence in knowing when a human being is helpless. What is it you want? Why? You know what it is. I don't. I, I swear. Winston, do you understand the construction of this cave? Before, the rats could smell you. Now, they can see you. And when I open these two partitions, have you ever seen a rat leap? through the air. Now leap onto your face and bore straight into it. Please, what is... Oh, Sometimes God, they oh, attack God. the eyes first. Oh, God, please don't do this. Sometimes please, they please. burrow through the cheeks and devour the tongue. Please, what is it you want? It was a what? common punishment in Imperial times. Don't do to, to Julia, please. Not, not me. I don't, I, I don't care what you do to her. Please just tear her face off. Strip her to the bone, please. I, I don't care what you do to her. Please just do it to her. Please stop me. There, you see? You knew what to do all along. Big Brother has freed you from your insanity and laid you bare to yourself. Your love was a lie, an illusion. Hmm? As insubstantial as smoke, the brotherhood, Goldstein, the rising of the people that you so foolishly believed in. Why? Why what? Why'd you believe in it? Uh, who knows? Perhaps you have some congenital defect, some psychological disorder. Why is not my concern. Betrayed her. And all you did was let go of the last of your illusions. Hmm? Go 
the worst thing in the world is not the rats, Winston. It's opening that last door in your mind. And standing there, naked before yourself. Really seeing yourself as you really are. That, that's our gift. That's Big Brother's gift. Two limbs and she. Oh, yeah. I'd seldom seen anyone come over to us as quickly as she did. <laughs> she betrayed you. Completely. In all her rebelliousness, dirty mindedness, everything has been burned out of her. You hardly recognize her now. I feel empty. As a clear, clean glass, we will fill you up again. Before you shoot me, I promise. <laughs> Thank you. Winston. How many fingers? I love you. <laughs> oh, Winston. Not me. <laughs> Maneuver, the armies of Oceania have utterly routed the forces of East Asia. <gasps> Over a million killed and half a million captured. Yes. yes. The whole of Africa is now in our control. This triumph brings the war within a measurable distance to its end. Big Brother has brought us the greatest victory in human history. Oh. <laughs> Big brother. It was only a hopeless fancy. It passed like a Thank <laughs> you.